I'm Ellis Martin, and this is the Ellis Martin Report and Money Talk Radio. Every single one of us listening to this program today has either been afflicted or has been close to someone afflicted or has lost someone to cancer. And perhaps not even once, but several times in your life. Cancer is about as common as the common cold. It's devastating, not just to the cancer patients, but to the loved ones and families closely associated with them. Going back about 80 years or so, the main remedies for cancer remediation have been either chemotherapy, radiation, and or a combination of both, and not without devastating and debilitating side effects. We have found a potential solution with a company called GT Biopharma, trading on the NASDAQ as GTBP. That's GTBP. Using their proprietary platform technology, GT Biopharma is generating novel immuno-oncology biopharmaceutical drugs targeting cancers such as acute lymphocytic leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, acute myeloid leukemia, and multiple solid tumors in a variety of cancers. We're going to learn all about it today as we visit with GT Biopharma's CEO, Michael Breen. Mr. Breen is an English qualified attorney and was formerly the managing director of the sports and entertainment division of Bank Insinger de Beaufort NV, which is a wealth management organization and was part of the BNP Paribus Group, one of the world's largest banks. He's a former senior equity partner in the 400 plus partner and 50 plus office law firm of Clyde & Company, whose head office is based in London, England. And he joins us right now today. Michael, welcome to the program. Thank you so much for joining me today. It's great to have you here. Thank you, Alice. I'm very delighted to be here. Really excited. What is GT Biopharma? GT Biopharma is a clinical stage oncology company. So we are treating human patients currently in the clinic for acute myeloid leukemia. We have a number of other candidates which we will be bringing into the clinic over the next 12 to 24 months, which will include pretty much all of the large solid tumors and also autoimmune disease or all very important diseases that we need to find a cure for. But first and foremost, we are a company that is in clinical research trying to find a cure for cancer and also autoimmune disease. I have covered several companies over the years that are related to curing cancer, potentially mitigating it. But I think, and I believe, ET Biopharma is addressing a platform technology that can ultimately target all forms of cancer. And listen, Michael, we all know people and we've lost people that are very close to us. Everybody listening to this program has lost somebody to cancer and may have a friend or a relative right now that is being afflicted by cancer. So it's personal. So let's get into that. How does your company stand out from everyone else? It was a couple of things. And Ellis, I'm glad you identify the fact that it is personal and it is first and foremost, very personal. I myself have suffered from cancer. I'm happy to say that I'm currently cancer free, but it doesn't mean that you're guaranteed to be cancer free for life. So it's very important that we find a way forward to address these various different types of cancer. The other point which you've very rightly addressed is that it's a platform technology. The molecule that we are developing and have developed to cure cancer is a three-part molecule. We call it a trike or tri-specific NK cell engager. And it involves what we call camelid and nanobody technology, which means that it is, the camelid simply refers to the fact that it's using some of the science taken from camels, llamas, and alpacas and their immune systems. Now you might go, oh, that, that's left field. But the reason for that is that these animals exist in extremely harsh environments. And as a result, over hundreds of years, they've developed the most robust immune systems. And we have tapped into that to utilize that to assist with regard to our science and then to harness it and to use the body's natural immune system to go after and kill any cancer cells that are in the body. And the nanobody part refers to the fact that it's tiny fragments. It's very small indeed, which simply means that it's much easier for it to bind onto the cancer tumor, whether it's solid tumors or whatever. And it just means it's therefore it binds onto them and stays bound onto them and it's easier to kill them. In a nutshell, it's very 
cutting edge technology. And the most important thing is using the body's natural immune system and basically turbocharging that so that the body kills any cancer that forms within it. And the other thing I would just highlight is the fact that if you look back over the last 80 years, when someone is diagnosed with cancer since the end of the Second World War, it's pretty barbaric with regard to the solution that your physician will recommend to you if you're unlucky enough to be diagnosed with a form of cancer. So for the last 80 years, the go-to options are radiation, which means burning your flesh, chemotherapy, which means poisoning your blood, surgery, which means cutting chunks out of you. And if you're really unlucky, you might have two or indeed all three of those options recommended as the way forward. And I firmly believe that there's a better way. And that better way is obviously that we go down the right route of using the body's natural immune system making it more robust, making it able to go after. And our technology, we call it a serial killer because when the NK cells find the target, which is the cancer, they kill it and they keep killing all of the other cancers in the body until they're eradicated. So it's a serial killer because some technologies, they kill it and they die with the cancer cell when they kill it. Ours does not do that. It keeps going. Let's be clear that NK stands for natural killer cell. So unique that you mentioned these animals that are very resistant over generations and generations of having to live in harsh environments. Where did this technology come from? So that's another excellent question, Ellis. The technology emanates from a guy at the University of Minnesota. He is extremely well credentialed. He is very well regarded amongst his peers. His name is Dr. Jeffrey Miller. He is a professor of hematology at the University of Minnesota, and he has been working on this science relentlessly for the last 20 years. He is regarded in his space amongst his peers as the key opinion leader. And the analogy I use to help folks understand how important he is in this space, how important he will be, is I say he is our Tom Brady. He's our quarterback. Everybody knows if you've got the best quarterback on your team, you're as likely or more likely than anyone to win the Super Super Bowl. And the Super Bowl for me is obviously in our space and what we do, that's finding a cure for cancer and getting FDA approval for our drug to treat these terrible diseases. And I firmly believe that Dr. Miller is the best placed person with the best knowledge and science to achieve that. And he is our Tom Brady. Okay. To be clear, Michael, when this technology is employed, we're not engaging with either chemotherapy or radiation at all, are we? This is standalone. This is a mono, what physicians describe as a monotherapy. It's, as you rightly say, it's standalone. This will do the job on its own and kill the cancer. Now, it may be that after we get approval from the FDA in time, the recommendation from many physicians who are used to recommending these different types of chemotherapy and radiation for several decades will still want to use that technology. But from our perspective, it's a monotherapy, it's standalone, and it does not need to be used in conjunction with any other form of treatment. We have an idea what the side effects of radiation and chemo are. What about this drug? That's a great question, Ellis. We have already used this drug with what we now refer to as our first generation trike or molecule in 2021. We treated 12 patients and in all 12 patients, so that was the first in human trial with regard to the, for blood cancer, for acute myeloid leukemia. And of all 12 patients, there was no significant side effects, I think. Two patients had a slight fever, which was easily treatable. But other than that, no side effects. And we are now currently in the clinic in 2025 with our second generation, much more potent second generation trike, which is 10 to 40 times more potent. We have already treated three patients in the clinic. And again, no side effects whatsoever. Give us a picture of what the typical clinical trial patient might look like. What stage are they at with their particular cancers? What type of cancer would it be? Who is that person? And, and this is this is where it really gets personal. You humanize what we're talking about. As you can imagine, with regard to first in human trial, the FDA quite rightly are very prescriptive with regard to who you're allowed to give your drug 
drunk to? So they clearly define that we can only give it to someone who is stage four. So depending on the physician, stage four will either be described as terminal or life limiting. And they also must have tried and exhausted every other form of treatment. So you're talking about someone who is often in some cases has been advised that they need to put their affairs in order and they have sometimes less than six months, sometimes less than nine or 12 months. We are very sadly their last chance. Michael, certainly there are individuals listening to this interview who either are afflicted with some form of cancer and are in stage four, or they know someone very close to them, and they're desperately seeking help. What would you say to those individuals right now? You're not on the market yet. You're doing clinical trials. How soon are we from this technology being available to those that need it? That's an excellent question, Ellis. And you're right. We do all know folks who very sadly are in need of a more humane form of treatment for cancer. We are currently, as I said, in a phase one clinical trial treating patients. The site that we're using is the University of Minnesota. And the way it normally works is after phase one, and we would then immediately go into phase two, where we expand the number of trial sites and the number of patients to demonstrate efficacy and also hopefully determine clearly what the optimum dosage is. And it's based on the weight of the patient. So it's uh, it's based on micrograms per kilogram of body weight. And clearly answer the question, it is possible we could be fast-tracked by the FDA if we get what's called orphan drug status. And we did obtain orphan drug status from the FDA from our first generation molecule in 2021. So I would be disappointed if we did not again obtain that. And it's difficult to be definitive with regard to timing, particularly where we are currently with regard to the FDA is in a state of flux, but I'm hoping under the current administration that it is more flexible rather than less flexible in terms of that. It's entirely possible that we could be on the market in three years, but there are obviously a lot of things that need to happen and to all of the stars to be aligned in order to hit that target. But everything that we've seen so far in the treatment of our three patients for acute myeloid leukemia currently in 2025, that is all looking very good from a safety perspective. And then in late 2025, we're going to file another, what we call an IND, which is where we apply to the FDA to get permission to commence another in-human, first in-human clinical trial, which will be for solid tumors. And we're going to hit all the big solid tumors, which we're really very excited about. So we're going to go after head and neck cancer, prostate cancer, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, gastric and intestinal cancer, lung cancer. So all the main cancers and obviously the things like prostate and breast cancer, there are things that we really do need to find a cure for. And then in 2026, our intention is to file a third IND, again to the FDA, looking for permission to commence another phase one clinical trial in relation to autoimmune disease. And the autoimmune disease, and I'm not sure that folks necessarily know this unless people who are affected by it, but the autoimmune disease around the world is as prolific and needs addressing every bit as much as cancer does. The oncology space is huge. It's targeted to be the cost up to $400 billion by 2030. And the autoimmune disease space is as large as the oncology space. It's vitally important that companies like ours find a way, a more humane way to treat these diseases and these malignant cancers. We have potential investors listening at all times. Give us an idea of the market in numbers. I can't pick a number, but hopefully you might give us a general idea of what that would be. And what is the potential investment opportunity right now for new investors in GT Biopharma? The company uplisted on to the NASDAQ exchange in February 20. 21. At the time, we uplisted at $5.50. We're in a phase one clinical trial for what we now refer to as our first generation molecule. And the stock ran to an intraday high around the end of June 2021. So within a period of 14 weeks, it ran from $5.50 to $19.73. And the company intraday market cap was $550 million. The biopharma space in 2021, particularly the first half of 2021, was red hot. 
And for whatever reason, it just cooled off to the point where it became an iceberg over the last two to three years. And we have been out of the clinic. And as a direct result of that, the company's market cap has dropped down to below $6 million, which when you take the cash at bank, it means that the market has determined that taking a very different view of biopharma companies. But it also means it's pretty illogical because given our cash at bank, our enterprise value, our science, our patents, our patent applications, all of our intellectual property, it's valued at almost nothing. Like it's valued at one to one and a half million dollars. And that to me seems hugely illogical, particularly when the company in 2021 had a market cap of 500 to 550 million dollars. And in the intervening period, the only thing that has really happened is we have regrouped and we have much improved the technology and the science. The second generation molecule is, as I've said, between 20 and 40 times more potent and we also have other offer platform technologies, which we going into phase one trials for, as I say, solid tumors and autoimmune. So if anything, the valuation in my mind would seem like it would be logical if it was higher than the valuation in 2021. The ticker is GTBP and we're on NASDAQ. Anyone can obviously consult their broker and determine if they want to look at the company in more depth and determine whether or not they think it is something that they would like to purchase. I don't give obviously advice in that regard, but a company that's currently as we are in a phase one trial and is looking to commence another two phase one trials, I'll leave it up to your listeners to determine whether or not they feel that is a good opportunity. Michael, thank you so much for joining me today on the program and bringing this to our audience. I look forward to our next conversation very soon, sir. Thank you, Alice. I have thoroughly enjoyed meeting with you today and talking about our company and our science. And for me, I hope your listeners understand the passion that everyone at GT Biopharma has for finding a cure for cancer. And we are working tirelessly, relentlessly. As I say, we're in phase one trial. Everything is looking extremely good with regard to those results. And we very much look forward to the future. I've been speaking with Michael Breen, CEO and Managing Director of GT Biopharma, trading on the NASDAQ exchange as GTBP. That's GTBP. We ask you only to consider GT Biopharma as an addition to your investment portfolio after doing your own research. Start at the company's website, gtbiopharma.com. That's gtbiopharma.com. For Money Talk Radio and the Ellis Martin Report, I'm Ellis Martin. GT Biopharma is a paid sponsor of the Ellis Martin Report and Money Talk Radio. Invest at your own risk.